morning, boss. Good morning. How come you're so early? I went over to the hospital to see Robin. I really couldn't bear to go back to an empty house. How is Robin? Uh, I got a puppy out of the kennel early this morning, and I snuck it under my coat, up to her room. Put it on the cot, and it ran about and chewed and barked, and I didn't even think she noticed it. In fact, it seemed like she retreated even more. I only wish I... I only wish I could take Anna there to see her. You will, boss. You will. You know something, I... I wasn't even able to think about it before, much less put it into words, but... Uh, Anna might not even be alive. <laughs> red peppers and a ton of green peppers, we get a 15% discount, don't mm -hmm. we? Or is it uh, 20? I know I've got it somewhere here, that offer. What do you think, Stella? I think we should go for it. Well, as soon as we find it, we'll put in the order. Uh, Jennings, we have my car brought around front. Well, 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 what have we got here? <laughs> We're doing the books uh, for our uh, Pickle Lila company, dear. Mm, you look very dapper. No, yeah, thank you. That's no way to run a business. That kind of bookkeeping went out with Charles Dickens. Well, we seem to be muddling through pretty well, don't we, Stella? Oh, as long as they buy our pickle relish, we're doing fine. Yeah, well, how do you keep track of your profits and losses? Oh, we don't have any losses, mm. only profits. Mm. Uh, where are you going to today, dear? In town, on business. Business, dear? Bobby, what are you still doing here at this hour? Today's my day off. Oh, well, maybe I'd have a cup of coffee with you. I think I'd have time if you'd ask me. <laughs> I'll have to make fresh. Uh, Bobby, listen. What? I got a feeling that you were a little bit uh, upset with me because I put Lucy on my show the other day. And Tiffany, it's fine with me if you want to lose your viewers. Wait just a minute, Bobby. I don't think I like your attitude towards me. Look, why don't we just have the whole thing out right now, okay? Okay. Let's have it out. Okay, why don't I just lay it right out for you? If you want to believe me, fine. If you don't want to believe me, fine. But if you do, I think it'd be great. And if you don't, well, I think we've always been friends, but there's nothing I can do about it. Okay? You ready? Okay. Okay. I did not put Lucy on my show just for the sake of having Lucy Coe on my show. I did it because of the Tanya Jones Day Care Center, which I happen to think is a very good idea. Now I know that it was your idea. I know it was Felicia's idea at the outset, right? Yes, it was. And we couldn't get it off the ground. Well, Lucy did. Tiffany, she's only doing all this because she wants to get in with that whole crowd, with the Barrington Look, and the Corbett. Well, I don't care what her motives are. The thing of it is, is the daycare center is going to become a reality because of it, and that is good enough for me. Okay? Enough said. Okay, you believe me or okay, you don't believe me? Okay, I believe you and I'm sorry. Okay. I've been walking around striking out of friends lately. I'm angry all the time. I'm really a mess. I'm just, I, I hate myself. Oh, come on, you don't hate yourself. I think you're just upset over Jake. I guess. You want to talk about it? You know the time? Yeah, I'm just meeting Cheryl for a business meeting this morning. It's no big deal. Plenty of time. I don't know where to start. Well, most people usually get hurt, and then they get angry. Mm. And they get hurt again. <laughs> you caught me on one of my angry days. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I think I did. <laughs> I did. When I'm angry, I feel like I can kill him for what he's done to me. And then I realized that he begged me to go with him, and I refused. And I didn't even refuse nicely. I stormed out of here one night and went to Duke's place on New Year's Eve and left him home. I guess I was trying to make some kind of a point, and I guess I didn't really believe that he was serious about going down to South America to help those homeless people. I bet he didn't believe that you were serious about walking out on him that night either. I can't really say what he believed. All I know is that I haven't heard a thing from him since he left, except for two quick notes and a brief phone call. Did you try to get in touch with him? 
And he's out in a disaster area in the jungle. I don't know how to get in touch with him until he tells me how. All I can assume is that he doesn't want me to get in touch with him. Oh, come on, I don't believe that for a second, and you don't either. Well, when you're as vulnerable as I am right now, you start to believe anything. I can't eat, I can't sleep, I'm walking around feeling sorry for myself. I can't believe that you really want to hear all this. Oh, I love this. I, this. I love this stuff. Keep talking to me, okay? Come on. You feel better. There is some fresh coffee in the kitchen. Would you like some? You know, I feel like the odd man out. It's my wife who's been kidnapped or abducted, whatever they want to call it. I'm only staying alive believing that she is still alive, and yet there's not a damn thing I can do to help find her. Irony is, my mother would have said that this is what you get from bargaining with the devil. You mean Jerome, right? Yes, I mean Jerome. I don't even know whether he's doing anything to help us find Anna. And then, of course, we've got Robert Scorpio, who's... He's frozen me out of the investigation for his own personal reasons. Well, so you're sure of that? Well, of course I'm sure of that. What do you think? You know, it's just it's ridiculous. The woman I love is missing, and I can't do a damn thing to help find her. I've been kept in the dark. I feel like I'm the odd <laughs> man take out. It easy. How can I possibly take it easy? I'm climbing the wall. Duke Lavery. What has been delayed? And try and make this quick, please. I'm trying to keep this line open. Oh. Good morning, Cheryl. Just on your way in, Sean? I'm here to see Duke, yeah. Well, I'm on my way out, which is probably just as well. Why is that? Oh, I know you're deeply involved with your friends who are in such trouble. Yes, I am. I'm not one to complicate things. I'm due to see Tiffany this morning, on business. I'll see you later. All right. All right, I'll have Angel look into it, and he'll get back to you. Yes, as soon as he possibly can. Goodbye. Angel? Good morning. Sean? Yeah, Duke? It's all right, it'll wait. We're not open for business. I'm not here for a drink. I'm here to talk about Robert Scorpio. I don't want to talk about Robert Scorpio. Damn well better be. Why? Because it involves Anna. I'm working on Yankee Stadium for an exclusive on our relish. Oh, that should be a good deal if we can get it. Uh-huh. Edward, you're looking quite handsome enough for a business meeting. Who is she? Uh, one of the smartest young women I've ever met, Cheryl Stansbury. Oh, smart and young and beautiful. Mm, that's a minor problem. Oh, you think so? Ah, <laughs> uh, what kind of business are you going to be discussing with her? Well, I have a great deal of money to invest now. Oh, Edward, why don't you relax and enjoy it instead of investing it? You're making money keeps my arteries open. Uh, what do you mean it's a minor problem? Her youth and beauty. <laughs> the big problem is that she's, well, she's a stranger, really. Well, I have great admiration for Cheryl's business sense. Isn't it interesting that I happen to be doing business with her at the moment? And with you, my dear, that is the big problem, her youth and beauty. Father, I discovered her business sense first. What's that make her, your private property? Well, I would say to both of you, be careful when you're dealing with beautiful strangers. I think that's what they call horse sense. That's what they call it. <laughs> Isn't this a, an odd expression when you think that really horses aren't that bright? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be very, very surprised if Cheryl takes you on as a client. You see, I'm giving her about um, as much business as she can handle at the moment. But I mean, if you want to play some of your little games with her, you go right ahead. It's exactly what I plan to do. And what are you doing home today, dear? I'm going to do some research for an article I'm doing for a medical journal. Oh, just like Monica did. Better. <sighs> dear, 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 dear. Lolly, may I ask you a personal question? You can ask me anything you like, Stella. Don't you ever get jealous. About my Edward? Never. But I do worry about Alan. His dear head is so easily turned. Oh, look, here's something. What is it? Let me see it. It's our profits. Oh, good. Oh. So you want my advice on this? Yes. I would just kind of put my life on hold. I mean, you don't know. Jay could be going through the same kind of hell that you are without you, you know? Tony said something like that, too. I think you should listen to him. 
I mean, you shouldn't make any major decisions or commitments or anything. That's basically what I meant by putting your life on hold. Not your whole life, just no major things, okay? That's a good idea. I, I couldn't help overhearing, but I think you're very perceptive. I agree. Really, Tiffany, that's good advice. Thanks. Uh, is this your day off, Bobby? Yes. Do you have any plans? Because uh, if you don't, I think you ought to get out of the brownstone for a while. Don't you think so, Tiffany? Well, I think it all depends on where she's going and with whom. Well, let's talk about where. Doesn't matter. <laughs> How about the zoo? I mean, it's cold outside, it's brisk, you get a lot of exercise, it'd be great. Yeah, the zoo. That's a good idea, Tiffany. Whatever. If you will excuse me, I think I'm going to leave. Well, I have a business meeting, but it won't be too long and I'll come back. Going to the zoo is a lot better than sitting around waiting for a phone call or a letter that never comes. I agree. Bye, Bobby. Don't worry, I'll make sure that she's okay today. She was right. So I guess I'm the official go-between from Robert. He wants to clear up all the misunderstandings you two have had. Frankly, I've had it with Robert. Why couldn't he come here himself? Because he is putting in more hours there are in a day on Anna's investigation, and he's very worried about Robin, too. Oh, and how do you think I feel, man? I've got my hands tied. Frustrated. Very frustrated. Look, all I'm asking is you give him a call. Sean, I don't know whether you're aware of how deep the rift is between Robert and myself. Was it Anna? Of course it's Anna. He's in love with her. He's totally obsessed with her. He wants to find her for his own personal reasons. Duke, you're going too far with this. The only thing that Robert is obsessed with right now is getting the mother of his child back. Okay, you know him better than I do. Can you sit there and tell me honestly that he does not love Anna? I don't think he's over Holly yet. How can you be certain of that? To tell you the truth, I don't think I can be certain about anything these days. Well, I'm not certain what his motives are. So what if you're not certain about his motives? The man is in charge of the police department right now when he wants you aboard. Perhaps there are other ways. What are you talking about? Other ways to find out where Anna is. And what does that mean? 